assist to the front bumper, and he hits him again now. Ray Alfala into the outside wall. Gonna pass nearly three cars down that front straightaway, and he's gonna get them all done with. What a amazing lead to the inside goes Logan Clapman is gonna touch in. Pit press saves it. What a save! Look to the outside, and Trunke goes off. De Jong into second place. I'm going for the switch back. Oh ho ho! Pinpoint driving. It's howling oh. down to the inside. Oh. I tried this contact though. As wide left to the racetrack. Chris Renner drives it back down underneath, and he takes that second spot right back. Joker and goes to Garrett Lowe. Garrett Lowe should take victory with all that contact. He's going to try and make the move around the upset the Parabolka. That's not going to work, but he's going to try and get the cut back here. Get the run out the Parabolka. That's beautifully done there. Michael Schumacher. There's a little bit of door banging as well. As Fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got traction. He's got rid of the outside. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up to him. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. Six very close. These guys are going to want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's massive. Oh, this is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my oh, God. God, what? series we have seen some sensational racing action time and time again but monday is the curtain call monday is the time where everybody stops everybody brings it in and they say this is the last day where they can race week 13's build comes up soon it's one of the biggest builds that i racing have had in a very long time and of course we culminate this season at one of the greatest australian racing circuits to ever have graced racing we are at mount panorama circuit bathurst for the final round of your monday night v8s here on the iRacing Esports Network, brought to you by SimSpeed TV. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone watching around the world. I'm Jake Sperry, joined alongside by Jake Burton, Scott Fountain, on the cameras for us here today. But, Burton, this track, it doesn't need an introduction. It is the most famous track for Australian touring cars. And for these Holdens, for these Ford Mustangs, they're going to be pounding up and down this mountain 31 times try and prove who is the fastest around this fabled place yeah that's it good evening everyone really excited for this one bathurst is always a pleasure for us to race at and to watch um many people every year in australia make the uh the sacred journey to bathurst to watch the the uh, supercars race a thousand kilometers around there each year unfortunately it'll be a bit later this year but um yeah this place you ask anyone who's been there and it's just an absolutely stunning facility and uh, no amount of sim racing or or television viewing will really capture what this place is truly like until you've been there. However, iRacing does have our extremely realistic uh, and laser scanned version of the circuit in sim, which these guys will be doing 31 laps around tonight. Of course, with weather conditions simulated as well, we're looking at a 28 degree track at the moment, which for me, I think is about perfect. That's around where you want. That's a really nice place to be. Cold and fast, but not too cold that the first lap's too sketchy. And Burton, let's talk about conditions a little bit as well, because the wind is gusting 
at the moment from around 20 to 30 kilometers an hour uh, around this place coming in from the south southeast so that's going to really make a difference as they go up and down the mountain you can see it's almost caught adam briggs out as he's almost slightly overshot there down at the chase yeah, that's it. The, the beauty of this track is it's quite square in terms of how the track works. So that means pretty much if you're getting a headwind going down Conrod Strait, you're getting a tailwind going down Mountain Strait. So you have to face sort of all kinds of different conditions across the lap. Of course, over the top, it's quite scary as well because you've got the car being pushed wide by the gusts as you go through the apexes and whatnot. But the guys so far managing to get it sorted out in qualifying. Currently at the moment, it's tight between Brady Myers and James Scott on 203 flats and then a three tenth margin back to Sam Sutton in P3. And Corey Shepard there in fourth position as well on a 203.7, having a good run of things at this moment in time. So it is Altus 1, Altus 2 at this point in time. And it'll be all about looking to try and find that level of improvement on the second lap. And of course, this being a street circuit around this place, the walls come upon you a lot quicker. It's a lot narrower. It's a lot tighter. It's a lot tougher around this place, Burton. So when these times come over and they're heading up through the mountain, coming down the hill once again, through Brock skyline and down towards the dipper and the forest elbow, this is one of the few tracks in Iceland where you have to say you must be pinpoint perfect. Otherwise, the lap gets a 0x instant point, which invalidates the lap. Yeah, that's it. And uh, Peter Brock, a man well known for being an absolute legend and king of this racetrack, um, once said that the best tracks have consequences. And I think Bathurst is probably the the biggest example that we go to in these cars and just about any cars in uh, in the world of motorsport. Uh, when it comes to consequences, high speed corners with street circuit vibes, certainly very, very dangerous. And what makes it up there with the likes of the, the Nordschleife and the other great circuits of the world. Drivers look to try and get their second laps in. Yuanji Lin improves to a 2065, but no improvement on position. Marty Hansen, car 29 of 29 in this field, 206.4, not good enough to improve on that lap time. Like to Adam Briggs though, trying to make a push over to the line 203893. His best at the moment invalidates the second lap. Corey Shepard won't find improvement either. Jamie McKnight though, here in the United car, looking to try and get over the line and improve on a 2052, but he does an 053 to get himself over the line as uh, Hetterscheid there uh, in the 26 jumps up to 21st position. Uh, overall with that lap time so not bad at all from him as he gets himself up the order just a little bit more there's christian smart over the line slightly improves one position gain from christian he moves from 16th to 15th and that could be a big difference yeah, that's it. The thing is, Sperry, we're going from one extreme to another when it comes to last week to this week. Watkins Glen, we had an extremely field, uh, sorry, an extremely close sort of field spread, giving it such, it was such a simple sort of racetrack to get your head around. Obviously, it still had its difficulties, but here at Bathurst, it's so technical. Track knowledge is so important and, uh, and commitment is so important as well. People need to take those risks to be fast. We're seeing quite a big field spread. It's about three and a half seconds from 1st to 26th at the moment. Exactly, and qualifying is all completed. So the grid will be as follows for you, ladies and gentlemen. Brady Myers is on pole position with James Scott, his teammate, alongside Sam Sutton and Corey Shepard share the second row. Jordan Ross starts from fifth with Ryan O'Sullivan, his former teammate, alongside in sixth. Adam Briggs and Robin Kirk are seventh and eighth position as an all DPR fourth row with Kyle Stokes and Andrew Dyson, ninth and tenth. Yeah, over the page we go, Damian Johnson and Kurt Stenberg, 11th and 12th. It's Kurt Stenberg's birthday today, so hopefully he has a hell of a run for his birthday. Uh, Brian Berg in 13th, Jack Wittes, 14th, all our sort of mid-pack regulars that we expect. Steve Janssen, 15th, Christian Smart, 16th, Rob Bowden, Mitchell Bolton, I think he's a bit of a new name there in 18th, with Marty Hansen and Michael Rosenblatt once again making a return in 20th.
There's Jane McKnight in 21st. Daniel Hettershide alongside him on the 11th row. Team boss of Evolution Racing Team, Brenton O'Brien, starts 23rd with Henri Michaela there in at 24. Following that, it's Greg Sharp and Yuan Ji Lin. And then the drivers who did not set times will be separated by their I rating. So Corey Preston gets ahead of Sergio Sete Camara and Kai Allen, who is car number 25 in this field, will start all the way at the back in position number 29. Worth noting that this is a short run to the start-finish line. With the grid slots how they are, these drivers will be starting right at the back, all the way around at the final corner, and will have to try and navigate their way through that Murray's Bend before heading towards Hell's Corner, turn number one. They've got a nice stagger to go off this start. Don't expect many moves into turn number one unless someone gets a shocker. Brady Myers has the margin. There's the green flag. There's the drop and go. And it's a good start from Sam Sutton. He's immediately alongside him by James Scott. He's up into second. He's broken the momentum of those two at the front. Jordan Ross trying to find a way through as well here on Corey Shepard. And Shepard just about needing to herd a position he falls back into line as they go through up the mountain straight for the very first time some side by side as they go up through like to Johnstone and Stenberg at it at the moment Stokes and Kirk Briggs and O'Sullivan up they go Scott looking at second can't quite get there to the cutting they go along for the first time yeah, that's it. Awesome start from Sam Sutton. He is a man who knows how to win at this location. Sam Sutton, the V8 Scots Bathurst 1000 champion back in 2015. He knows how to drive this racetrack. And a bit of a mistake from Brady Myers going through the cutting on that first lap means they've got quite a condensed top three. We certainly do as they head themselves through up towards the metal grate. And now over now into the next section of track. This McPhillamy Park to Skyline becomes absolutely fantastic as they now get themselves down the hill on the brakes. Gravity takes you all the way through this section. It's like kayaking down a really rapid river as you go on through the dipper and continuing on the run. O'Sullivan looks like he could be in trouble here at the Forest Elbow. Look how close Adam Briggs is on the brakes into the next left-hander. Just no way to procure a position but now you've got Conrod which is the fastest straight in Australian sim racing heading towards the fastest corner in Australian sim racing let's go side by side yeah O'Sullivan had a bit of a poor run out of the elbow there so it's going to be side by side as they head down into this flat out six gear kink almost tipping 300 kilometers an hour and on lap one here Ryan O'Sullivan making the smart call to give the position up Absolutely, and there's a mistake in front because look at this, side by side for the lead. It was slightly too deep from Myers, but he blocks the pass. He wants James Scott to find a way through and Sutton's going to have to back out of it then. So Alters one and two, what teamwork, but Sutton's not giving this one up on the inside here. He's got the run towards turn number one if he needs it here at Hell's Corner, but he knows if he can't get it all sorted here, he's on the wrong side of the road up the mountain straight. He's on the wrong side of the road and falls back into line. Great work from the mistake by Brady Myers to cover off and get a 1-2. Yeah, great driving down at Turn 1 from Scott and Sutton as well. Both of those guys were really deep and gave each other the minimal amount of room they possibly could without contact. Great bit of racing there, and funnily enough for Bathurst, really, really clean and smart first lap throughout the field. Absolutely, they've driven this track more times than you can remember. It's ingrained onto the back of all drivers' hands as they want to try and master this place better than anybody else can. That's what all drivers will be looking to do. Not many changes then in the opening stages of this opening lap, but now onto lap two, you start to settle into a rhythm. This is one of the tracks you can say, Burton, where overtakes are not going to be uh, necessarily easy. They do come slightly at a premium, and at the moment we are seeing that as Mitchell Bolton down in 19, tries to chase down like to Rosenblatt. In front of that, Rob Bowden all over the back of Christian Smart. Yeah, that's it, Sperry. Well, pretty much the whole climb and descent of the mountain is pretty much a no-go zone when it Ooh. comes to passing. I'd say the cutting is just about the last spot you can safely get a move done without a lot of compliance from both drivers. And then all the way down until Forest's elbow where the mid-pack's going through now, you can have a go into there. But really, your main passing spots are down here at the end of Conrod, as well as the last corner at Turn 1 and Turn 2 down at Griffin's Bend. Mistake at the dip for Andrew Dyson. He drops two positions. Here comes Kyle Stokes, though, in ninth place. Looking to get by Robin Kirk. And, well, it seems like you're going to have to call the Starship Enterprise to find a move because Kirk is not budging here, Burton. 
<laughs> That's it, Sperry. Yeah, nice little exchange here. I think the thing is, is uh, the drivers respect this circuit and they know the kind of consequences that it can yield. So I think some smart play in these first few laps to make sure their Commodores and Mustangs aren't busted up come lap 31 is really going to pay yeah, that's going to be the key, making sure that they are looking after the car, managing it in all assets in this race and staying within a range of the drivers in front. O'Sullivan, Briggs and Shepard currently in a three-car scrap, fifth, sixth, seventh. And the front four at the moment working together, Myers and Scott and Sutton and Ross as they head up the hill towards this next right-hand corner. Now, this is going to be key. This race is going to be slightly over an hour right now, Burton. That's going to mean they are going to have to take one pit stop over the course of this race. And strategy on the mountain is all about track position. Yeah, that's it. And I actually noticed James Scott was very late to take his car to the grid, as well as Sam Sutton, who actually had his car shut off for the first few minutes of the race. So I'm going to say that perhaps maybe these guys are quite tight on fuel or at the very least trying to save as much as they can in that gridding sequence. So I'm really keen to see what happens here. The curious one for me is going to be James Scott. At the moment, he's just got Brady Myers tugging him all the way around this track, making a huge hole in the air as they go down Conrod Strait. There's potential for him to save a lot of fuel and potentially jump Brady in the pits. And that could be crucial, but we're not going to see that for at least another 25, 30 minutes, maybe even more in terms of this race. So keep an eye on that as drivers will now make their way down the hill once again here on lap three. At the moment, here comes Kyle Stokes once again. This time he gets alongside Robin Kirk trying to get this move and he's almost going to need to side draft his way down to the inside. Kirk's not going to lift out of this one as they head through the left-hander and on the brakes, you can see there, Kyle Stokes a lot later but they are even as they go through the corner. And Robin Kirk, who's taking a lot more speed through the corner, just gives it a little bit of the slide and says, I'm still holding on to this place. You're not finding a way by that easy. Yeah, that's it. Good racing room given by both of those guys. But you do have to ask yourself the question of whether it's worth it. Running too wide through some of those sections like that just bleeds so much time. And you saw last lap 5-9 for Stokes and a 5-9 for Kirk. But up ahead, Ryan O'Sullivan, a 4-8. So they've dropped a second that lap with that. Exactly. And that's what battling does around this place. You have to make a move cleanly and efficiently. Kurt Stenberg holds the next train up. He's the last driver inside the top 10 in his train. He's got Johnstone and Dyson and Borg and Widdis and Janssen and trying to stay on is Smart and Bowden. And there is uh, Rosenblatt and Bolton and McKnight and Hettershy just about there as well. So that is a train of 12 cars trying to get through for the one place. Yeah, that's it. And I think um, this is from Kirk. Kirk perhaps has had a bit of a moment there. He's gone too wide through the cutting. He's gone a little bit hard on entry. Um, he's just managed to get the outside wall somewhat reminiscent of what we saw Scott McLaughlin do in real life a little while ago as we catch a replay. And that's going to give a position to Kyle Stokes. Just a little bit hot on entry there, but that damage is going to last him throughout the whole run. Exactly, that's the key. Up the hill, on the brakes, through the left-hand bend. And then you can see he just tags the wall on the outside. And that's where the troubles lie as they went on through. Back, though, to lie as we go on forward. And all of a sudden, everything's starting to fragment a little bit. The top two pulling away from Sam Sutton ever so slightly in the one-performance racing car. And it's just starting to spread into the little groups of two. Not a million miles away at this point, Burton, but enough to make a considerable distance. Yeah, that's it. I'm not going to count out your third and fourth place getters yet, though. Sam Sutton, as I say, won the 2015 Bathurst 1000 in Scops as the main driver. And Jordan Ross, no slouch either. I believe he won, was it the 2019 1000 alongside Jared Philsell, albeit as a secondary driver. So these guys certainly know their way around. And Brady Myers' last lap looked seriously committed over the top of the hill. He's not leaving much on the table, and that's a risky game to play with uh, with 30 or well, 25 laps of racing still to go. There are a handful of drivers out of this race. Sergio Sete Camara and Corey Preston are some of them. Brenton O'Brien is another who has found himself on pit lane and effectively out of this race, all of whom out from the back of the pack, so to speak. So they haven't found the best run of things. Now, what I just found really interesting was Damian Johnstone running up the straight because he had himself within a range 
of uh, Kurt Stenberg, but what he chose to do was to stay onto the right-hand side of the circuit to stay out of the draft burden. Why would drivers decide to deliberately not take the slipstream coming up the mountain straight? Um, that's a weird one, Spare. I've just noticed that myself. Um, the logical first bet, guess, for me would maybe to be get some air in the engine. Maybe it's overheating a little bit, but typically that's not an issue you ever sort of face with these cars in iRacing um, unless maybe you've got some front end damage so that was a little bit curious I'm not sure why you wouldn't try and get every bit of draft that you can unless maybe he's feeling a little bit of overheating in the front tires which maybe a little bit might help there but I'm not sure maybe he might have just been texting well, maybe that could have been one of the things. And we, of course, advocate don't text and drive uh, when you go out there on the roads for realsies when you get yourself going forward. But for the time being right now, fifth, seventh, you've got Corey Shepard there having a really good run of things at the moment. He's down minus one positions, though, for the day so far. So he'll want to work his way back through. But the big key is his number, his car number. He's car number 20. So showing this sort of pace right now, Corey Shepard is, is proving that he can actually go out there and race pretty closely with some of the best drivers that Australian sim racing has to offer. Yeah, that's it. And remember last week's ferry, he did so well at Watkins Glen as well to, to recover so well. We, we He seems to be one of the newcomers to the scene and is doing really well with so little experience. Um, one thing I want to mention real quick, if I may distract from that, I took a quick tune into the onboard camera on James Scott's car that last lap by and headed into the chase. He was completely out of the fodder a long way before the kink there. So he is saving a lot of fuel behind Brady Myers. It looks like Brady Myers might be trying to do a little bit as well to sort of back the field up which is going to be music to the ears of Sam Sutton and Jordan Ross but I think James Scott's playing the long game here. Yeah and the long game could be key for the way this race is going to be run it's not a sprint it is very much a marathon when you get up to Mount Panorama Bathurst a marathon where every corner could be your last and this track does not forgive, it does not forget, it is one of the few maidens of circuits, which really is a very tricky mistress to master, some would say. But at this moment, there are so many great battles, great drivers close together out there on the track at the moment. Keep an eye on Kurt Stenberg, though, just for the moment. Has caught up to the back of Robin Kirk, who struggled since the mistakes, has dropped almost two seconds back off of Kyle Stokes, and suddenly he becomes the cork in the proverbial bottle. Yeah, that's it. We saw that mistake from uh, Robin Kirk a few laps ago up at the cutting, which would have caused some geometry damage to that right rear corner, which would not only be causing a little bit of instability over the top of the mountain, slowing him down, but also a lot of slowdown in terms of aero down this straight. Kurt Senbo is going to absolutely wipe by him here with that damage. Well, we'll see how this one works out. Stenberg right behind, about one car length between them as he closes the gap under the Mitsubishi Fuso bridge. Maybe looking for the right-hand side. Can't quite get an angle to attack, though, so has to stay in line, and that's the frustrating part here. Robin Kirk is just using his car in all the right places, but it's about the run off the exit that Stenberg's looking for here. Tucks up underneath, moves to the inside here for Murray's, and all back into line contact there with Damian Johnstone, who was going for that gap there on the outside. That was a late move back into line from Stenberg, and it starts to check the pack up. Johnstone looking at turn one. Now to the outside looks Andrew Dyson on the recovery. Brian Borg on the back now. This pack's starting to get a little bit antsy. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a little cheeky from Stenny there. You don't normally get away with that one. And honestly, if he'd ended up in the fence, it probably would have been his fault. So um, really, <laughs> really switched on driving from Johnston to not have a collision there. When you move under brakes like that, you usually expect to get, uh, to get offloaded. But um, yeah, really interesting. Stenberg seems to be struggling a bit on corner exit. He didn't quite get the run onto Conrad then, which might have allowed him a better run on Kirk and he just doesn't seem to quite have the traction of some of the other cars in this pack. And that's the key. It's all about getting the run off of the corner to attack in this race. It's no good being quick over one lap when you can't get it going as Johnstone really struggling here 
up the mountain as he goes on through. You can see Andrew Dyson desperately wanting to find a way through, but from attacking down at the bottom, right at the uh, uh, point where Bathurst comes into full view, it's the case where now Damian Johnstone has himself maybe three, four, half a second back now in terms of the battle. It fragments, it extends, and it closes around this place. Leading drivers back down the mountain here on lap seven out of 31 revolutions of the circuit and they are starting to just fragment ever so slightly more out here on track as i just saw rob bowden there almost clip the wall coming out of the forest elbow yeah that's it as we mentioned sperry this is one of the longest straights that that we'll see on just about any racetrack it's about a kilometer long so getting off forest elbow is so important and key is to get to the throttle and the track's disappearing from underneath you so it's just going to understeer as soon as you get on the throttle so if you get on it ever so slightly too early like rob did just then you get ever so close to that outside fence there and obviously the closer the better but as larry perkins learned a few years ago and dick johnson also learned Ooh. you can certainly stuff it up but stenberg in the lane that's early here on lap seven so that's going to be a key race for kurt stenberg if he's coming in this early to get himself out of dramas, out of traffic, maybe a two-stop call. Uh, that might be something just to keep in mind. So at the end of lap seven, Kurt Stenberg, first taker onto the lane. There's only one other reason why he would come down onto the lane this early, and it would be not one of the best reasons in the world. It would be that only qualifying fuel was put in the car. You wouldn't have seven laps of fuel in your qualifying car, though, Sperry. I'm not never too know. sure what's going on. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. That seems a little bit weird to me from Stenberg. I'm wondering if maybe he's trying to do some kind of weird two-stop strategy or something. I, I'm not too sure what's going on there. That doesn't make a lot of sense because it's far too late for a penalty. It's far too early for an incident penalty. And for me, it's, it's far too late for qualifying fuel. So I guess we'll see as the race goes on. We certainly will see as drivers look to try and push up forward. So we'll see how this one all continues the longer that this race goes on. Not necessarily at the front of the field, though. We are seeing a massive breakaway from the front, too. Sam Sutton's done a fantastic job over this race to keep the gap in and around one second between himself and James Scott out on track. And that's going to be the key for Sam Sutton's race. He's got to try and find a second of fuel on his rivals in front. And that, when you're out in front, and you're only getting the fringes of the draft, as I uh, choke on my own self, that's not ideal. Uh, but uh, Sam Sutton needs to stay within one second here of James Scott and Brady Myers. Yeah, it's a similar story to what we saw last week at Watkins Glen. I can't remember which of the cars it was, but they were having to work really hard to just stay within that second margin. And the thing is, is um, James Scott, although he's maintaining that second margin to Sutton, is saving a lot of fuel behind Brady Myers. We know this, we've seen his on board. So I think, um, I think Sam's going to find himself in a bit of strife. I think if you're Sam Sutton, you really just want to close that gap and try and be as close as you can when you come into the pits because he's not saving any fuel where he is now. Captain Kirk loses a position to Damian Johnstone. He slid himself out of both parts of the chase. He's done so well to keep it out of the barriers, but when they get themselves to Murray's corner, Johnstone's down the inside and suddenly you've got two DPR cars side by side. But look at this, coming straight back up the mountain towards turn two. He gets caught out on the marbles there, Burton. And that is Robin Kirk falling behind his teammate, Andrew Dyson, and definitely not having an easy run of things as Dyson's going to go sideways and he's hard into the wall at the cutting. Yeah, that's it. I think Dyson might have just driven the cutting a little bit deep, still thinking that Kirk was there, and he's actually just brought himself undone. Again, he's had a similar bit of contact there to what Kirk had a few laps ago, so they're going to be nursing similar levels of damage for the remaining 22 laps of this race. Well, it hasn't affected him too much at the moment compared to Brian Borg in front. He has lost the position, but will now need to Jones. work hard. Jack Widdis behind Steve Janssen there as well, moving on forward. But it is starting to get a little bit close here for certain battles. Look at Adam Briggs. This is the other of the DPR cars, the leading DPR car in this field, trying to get by Corey Shepard right now, or maybe just saving a little bit more. He can't afford to stay behind for too long, though. Can Adam Briggs? He's two seconds back now of Jordan Ross, and he thinks now's the time to attack down to the inside. Corey Shepard gladly obliges. 
Yeah, that's it. M makes sense to not try and go too wide through the chase there. You can do it. Um, there was an era, era in supercars, rather, that the cars had similar levels of power, but almost no aero, and they were actually having to brake before the kink. But now, with all the aerodynamic grip that these cars have available, it's pretty easy to actually go too wide through there. But at this point in the race, maybe not making too much sense. Christian Smart right now is trying to be the smarter driver, stuck behind Rob Bowden at the moment here in the battle for 16th place backwards. He has lost the place over the course of this lap, though, and that has been crucial for Christian Smart's race. Lost it down the chase into the prime overtaking opportunity. But look at this pack behind Bowden right now. Five car train trying to get themselves all up forward in this field. Yeah, that's it. And it's an interesting, actually, to note the lap times that these guys are doing. So 6-2 from Bowden, 7-0 from Smart, 6-7 from Rosenblatt. To put that in perspective, Brady Myers' last lap ran a 4-9 to uh, another 4-9 from James Scott. So that just shows the difference between your really top-level guys and your mid-pack drivers at a circuit like this. Robin Kirk's really struggling. He went over the corner at turn one, had to try and serve everything down, lost the place to Brian Borg. And hello, we're in exactly the same place we were a couple of laps ago. Kirk and Dyson uh, right up together on track once again around this place. So that's really interesting right now. Who's struggling, who's not at the moment as they all make their way down the mountain here in this mid-pack trying to continue on their race. One-thirds distance already scored in the books and we're starting to look at uh, looking at getting towards that pit stop window happening in a moment. James Scott really closing to the back of Brady Myers who's led every lap of this race so far but again lifting way, way off of it as they hit the breaks onto the chase and making sure that Brady is effectively being the pack horse right now for James Scott. Yeah, that's it. James is just letting Brady take him along and obviously these two are teammates so Brady will know full well exactly what James Scott's doing so I think Brady will be trying to save a little bit of fuel as well and if those two can both save fuel they're going to pretty much solidify their margin to Sam Sutton when they come into the lane but I think James Scott is looking really good here if he doesn't make the same mistake that we saw made last week I believe by Jordan Caruso if he pits maybe a lap earlier than Brady this is going to be a really smart fuel save and almost going to guarantee him the lead. Interesting. Andrew Dyson comes in on lap 11 then of this race. Remember, he did hit the wall at the cutting. He will be on an earlier stop cycle compared to other drivers. Lap 11, that's about one-thirds distance into this race. That's right on the fringes, we could say here, Burton, of the pit stop window being open. Yeah, that's it. We are assuming, of course, that this is a one-stop race. I wouldn't think it's a two-stop race, but Kurt Stenberg's strategy still bewilders me a little bit. I'm not sure why he decided to pit so early, but Dyson obviously trying to get out of that pack. He's got a little bit of damage. Put some fresh rubber on it and see what, what the car can do despite the damage. We have just seen a pass for the position. This is Daniel Hetterscheid losing 20th place to Kai Allen up at the second corner out on track. The Griffins bend as they uh, now head up the mount and look towards the next section of road. So a good change of position from those drivers as they move on forward in their attempt to get as many positions as possible in this iRacing official race. Not going to really see too much in terms of instant points here today, Burton, but worth noting, 17 instant points for a uh, stop and go penalty, which for next season is going to turn to a drive-through penalty as part of the additions to the service. That's it. It's probably a good time to actually talk about some of the changes that we're going to see next season. A lot more of the cars that we see here on the iRacing Esports Network are going to get some tyre model and damage model updates, um, including the, the 911 Cup car and NASCAR Cup cars, which are two of our world championship uh, racing series that we see here on the uh, on the iRacing Esports Network. So really excited for that, as well as some new content, including the, uh, the addition of three road course cars in terms of two road to Indy open wheelers, as well as the uh, BMW GT4, but also the, um, the 80s NASCARs, which is uh, something a bit unique that I know a lot of our American fans are keen for. Absolutely, and we have seen so much great content 
come to the iRacing Esports Network, to iRacing in general. And of course, you've got to talk about as well those rescans coming in of Road America, the likes of, uh, of course, uh, Kansas Speedway, I do believe it is, as there is so much great stuff that's going on that iRacing has been able to do. But there is so much right now which could just happen in this race. We're on lap 12 here of 31 out on track. And suddenly the closest battle, I think, out on track has been Corey Shepard versus Ryan O'Sullivan. Walking away has been Adam Briggs over the course of the last laps or so. 1.2 seconds. Now the gap. So what Corey, uh, Corey Shepard has to do is try and stay close to a margin. He was a tenth slow that last time by. But Ryan O'Sullivan is someone who is very, very experienced when it comes to this style of racing. He knows exactly what he'll need to do here when it comes to the stop. And look at Shepard there going through that third part of that downhill. The back looks really, really twitchy. Yeah, that's it. And th this is a big difference you notice between our newer guys versus our more experienced guys. Ryan O'Sullivan just looks like he's on a Sunday drive around there at the moment. He's doing similar lap times to Corey Shepard, while Corey Shepard looks like he's having a almost really? crash out at every corner. But the race lead is popping off now, as you said, Sperry, too wide between the Altus Commodores down into the chase. Brady's going to hang on to it for now. But what this is going to do is allow Sam Sutton a bit of a half, half lap free kick. If I'm James Scott, I pit this lap. Oh, well, he doesn't, though. He stays out of it and lifts off a bit more. So he decided, right, I'm going to send a warning message here. I can get by you here, Brady, but I'm going to sit and I'm going to wait. And I'm going to hope my opportunity comes later. Look at this, though, and how it's brought the gaps down. 205-2 from Brady Myers. And you look at drivers like Sam Sutton. He's still doing a 204-8. That's four tenths of a second. The gap down now to 1.2. And maybe Brady's thinking about his own race right now. Look how close they go again. To the inside looking comes James Scott. And finally, the message is sent. The position's changed. Almost a look back up and under from Brady Myers. But James Scott is your first lead change today after 13 laps. Yeah, that's it. So Brady's held on quite well here. And it'll be interesting now that sort of balance changes quite a bit. So for Brady Myers, he's had clear track all race. And now all of a sudden, he's got a big Altus Commodore rear wing stuck in front of him and a lot of aero push. While in contrast, James Scott, he's been dealing with the understeer of that aero push all day. And suddenly his car might be feeling a little twitchier. So this is going to be a really interesting contrast. But I think either way, it's something they're only going to have to deal with for a lap or two, because I think we'll expect to see James Scott in this lap. Borg out of the pits, ahead of Dyson, ahead of Kirk. That's big. Rob Bowden out of the pits, behind Jamie McKnight. So we're seeing some big moves happen on the stop. And remember, Kurt Stenberg is going to be ahead of all of them by the matter of fact of his four-lap undercut compared to everybody else. So that's going to be crucial here. Kurt Stenberg is going to be right up near the pointy end, but we expect his fuel numbers to be not good and maybe have to stop again over the course of the race though these are the drivers to keep in mind Myers leading uh, Myers was leading Scott leads Myers second Sutton third fourth is Jordan Ross at the moment with Adam Briggs in fifth place at the moment is there any taker onto the lane not from the front two not from the front three not from the front four so they're going to go another lap and look at Myers now just running all the way around the back and I think he's just completely gone full Tokyo through the final corner yeah, a bit of a rear locking slash front locking situation down at turn one. You can see Brady Myers, he's not comfortable behind James Scott at the moment. This is what I mentioned before, Sperry. Aero affects your braking as well. And suddenly there's a hundred kilos or so less aero on the nose of Brady Myers' car because he's got a big hole being punched in that air in front of him. And that's just taking a little bit of weight off the nose of that Altus Commodore, which is just struggling to turn in at the moment, which I think is a bit of a result of that. So Brady, what he needs to do now is maybe start bringing his brake markers back, take the time to save a little bit of fuel, maybe close that margin in terms of fuel that James Scott spent this whole race building. And just behind them, Sam Sutton now within one second here. So the miscommunication, the struggles between the Altus drivers, no team orders, 
Uh, it's meant that Sam Sutton all of a sudden is on the rear and he knows how to win around this place. He will try and do so to the best of his ability. Out of the pits comes Damian Johnstone and he is ahead of Brian Borg coming out of the stop. So a good stop there from Damian Johnstone to hold position at the moment in this race. And that will be key as the race continues moving on forward in this race. Back down the mountain though at the Forest Elbow. Go your leading three drivers at the moment. And when they get to about lap 16, lap 15, that's halfway. Not this lap, but next lap will be the halfway stage. And expect those drivers to try and even out their stints maybe today, Burton, to try and get the result they want. Yeah, that's it. If you're James Scott, though, you don't want to be undercut by Brady Myers. That's exactly what we saw Jordan Caruso do last week. He built up a big fuel advantage and then threw it all the way by pitting too late. You've got to pit on the same lap, if not a lap earlier than what Brady Myers does, but they both stay out for this lap. They absolutely do. All of the top four, five, six, seven drivers all stay out at the same time. You could say top eight at this moment all stay out and go another lap by onto lap 15 of this event scott and myers with a lock on the front of this field sam sutton there in third position at the moment as they went on through to go on two drivers coming in down onto the lane though this is going to be a battle of pit crews between christian smart and michael rosenblatt yeah, that's it. Those two quite close on pit lane here. It's quite an interesting pit lane. The uh, the speed limit is 50 kilometers an hour, which is what it is in real life, I believe, but quite a lot lower than what we see from a lot of pit lanes here on the iRacing service. You typically see sort of 70, 75, 80. So that means these guys have a much shorter braking distance coming into their lane, a little bit easier, but also with that curved pit entry makes it really hard to get down to speed. Exactly, and they've got to make sure that they hit the line absolutely perfectly as drivers get themselves going. Rosenblatt leaves first, and Smart's going to be right alongside here as they exit the pit. So they've got to sort themselves out into line as they go on through. There's the green commitment code. It's very early around here, but Rosenblatt still behind Christian Smart, and they are behind Rob Bowden still, and Kirk, and McKnight, and Dyson. And McKnight has actually got through on Robin Kirk. He's up another position, so great work from Jamie McKnight so far on the tyres. Yeah, that's it. I'm quite curious to see where Kurt Stenberg ends up popping out. His lap times haven't actually been that fast since he pitted. He's only sort of been sitting around the six flat region and he ran a 5-2 on the second lap of the race. So I'm not too sure what's going on with Kurt Stenberg. If you're going to do such an undercut, you really need to make it work. So once the field's cleansed, really keen to see where his ultimate strategy lands in. In comes James Scott from the race lead, releases Brady Myers. That's key from position number one then. He dives down on lap 15. Now he got one lap. Oh, he slid it all the way down the lane. Did he get the marker? There's a bit of tolerance down there. But James Scott, commitment plus onto the lane. Yeah, no, nah, he's not got any penalty from that. That was pretty much as perfect as you can get. I love the little slide on entry with all fours locked. That's mega. That's exactly what you want to see on pit lane entry. He knows that this in-lap, as well as the out-lap with the fuel advantage that he's got, is incredibly important. He's got the one-lap undercut on Brady Myers. Brady will almost certainly respond this lap. So if he nails it, comes out with no traffic, especially after all the fuel he saved, I expect James Scott should have the lead of this race by at least a second. Ross Briggs and O'Sullivan all in. Out comes James Scott, and he is just ahead of Henri Michael as he comes out of the pit. There's Jordan Ross trying to get his escape, and he's going to come out ahead of the Redback Racing Bow Repairs car of Marty Hansen. Briggs is going to fall out just behind O'Sullivan ahead. Kurt Stenberg there just behind that. Jack Widdis also came in onto the pits, as did Kai Allen as well. Side by side towards turn one, though, goes Jamie McKnight and Andrew Dyson. And McKnight really loving the car at the moment. He's passed both DPR machines. Yeah, really cool to see Jamie McKnight out there. One of the guys who, who runs and manages uh, a lot of teams and is quite involved in some of the sponsorships as well. So really cool to see, the, see him getting behind them. Exactly. And now it's all about positions gained and Jamie McKnight is doing a great job he's up four places at the moment and look at the train held behind 
Dyson, Kirk, Bowden at the moment all there. And if they keep fighting, they'll have the likes of Rosenblatt and Smart who are working together. Allen and Hetteschein who are slightly working together as well to try and get back up onto the pack. So that's going to be something to keep in mind the longer that the race goes on. Does Brady Myers come down to cover? Yes, he does on lap 16. Sam Sutton will also come down in on the lane. We welcome you to Pit Central because right now it's all about getting onto the lane, hitting the marks and running straight through with what you need. Shepard comes in. Kyle Stokes will take the lead. Yeah, a little bit of mastery as well from James Scott, I think. The other thing that we haven't really mentioned is that each one of these races, Sperry, here on the iRacing service has a different weather condition. And um, the thing is, is James Scott may not have raced in this weather condition yet. So by getting ahead of Brady Myers with a few laps to go allows him to calculate a leading fuel number. Because if he only fuels up to his fuel save number, he's not going to make it to the end if he's in the race lead. So that first couple laps before the pit stop may have helped him out. And Brady Myers now off the jacks. Let's see he's where ahead. James Scott ends up. He's ahead, he's ahead, and he's ahead well. He's done well on the fuel to get himself there. Remember, he was ahead for the longest time, so I think Brady might just have to save a lot of fuel here on this final stint. He's ahead of James Scott, but Sam Sutton, who's come out behind them, is not a million miles away still. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm wondering what's happened with James Scott there. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure because their in-lap time was almost exactly the same, so the out-lap time will be telling. Um, I'd love to see the stationary time between these two there because logically James Scott should have come out a long way ahead. Didn't look like there was uh, any mistakes as they went on through as it was a 16-8 that we were hearing for an out-lap there for James Scott. So that's going to be crucial then in and out and getting himself going. It was a 240, sorry, a 240 with lane time included going through. So this will be key here to look at Brady Myers' full lane time to see whether it's a case of, well, the lane time's worked out in favour or not. Sam Sutton behind will also be another key example of that. Jordan Ross for his lane time did a 2.41.5, all things considered. Briggs a 2.39.9. So that's going to be key. Are the numbers good for Brady Myers at the front of this field? And are they going to start playing with each other a little bit, knowing Sam Sutton's behind? Michael will give the position to Jordan Ross, and that is fourth position on net, pretty much James. And Kyle Stokes has got it horribly wrong coming onto the lane, and he's tagged the wall as he now hits his marks, and that might be an unsafe pit entry. Yeah, that's it. A little bit of uh, what they call pit lane understeer there for uh, for Stokes. But um, what I find really interesting, we had it relayed by our director, Fonty, that uh, it was a two-second faster pit lane stationary time for Myers. So that means he's taken two litres less fuel in the pit stop. So, Well, not two litres, sorry, two seconds less fuel in the pit stop. So what I'm wondering is maybe Brady Myers spent the last few laps before the pit stop saving fuel behind James Scott. Has Brady maybe under fueled based off the rest of the race being on the same number as what he was behind? Well, that's going to be so interesting for Brady Myers. And if he is going to have to lift and coast his way to a victory, James Scott has got to know when to pick the moment when it happens. We've seen it time and time again in this series. Burton drivers who cannot calculate their fuel numbers run out of fuel with not enough time to go in the race. You can save fuel. You can save a lot of fuel in these vehicles, but to save fuel efficiently without losing time. That is the true skill around this circuit in these vehicles. Yeah, that's it. And we won't know uh, until it sort of starts to happen. But um, the, the thing is, is Brady could have thought, right, I've spent three laps behind James Scott. We saw him really struggling on corner entry. I want to lead this thing no matter what. So Madison Downs quite well known for doing this, but he might have just thrown a few litres too little at it on purpose just to make sure that he's got the track position and then let the fuel be a worry for another day and uh, save with the track position. We know how important it is around here. We know he can lift and coast and maybe even back his teammate into Sam Sutton, who's still there. So I'm really interested to see how this strategy game plays out. There's a chance James Scott may have even just got it wrong and put too much fuel in. Well, that might just be the case of Scott now with a little bit of a gap now between himself and Brady Myers. Other changes that have happened. Rhino Sullivan has jumped Corey Shepard in the stop. So that's a change. Michael is still yet to come down and pit. Kyle Stokes is going to let through Kurt Stenberg in terms of this. So something happened here. 
to Kyle Stokes potentially. No, he's just let him go through. So Kyle Stokes right now traveling at only 250 down the straight. He's down 20 Ks compared to Damian Johnstone. I wonder if he's tagged something at one point in time on the circuit right now because he is looking incredibly slow and the rear does not look nice at all. Yeah, it looks like he's definitely had a hit or two over this lap. I'm just checking back through the lap to see if he's had some contact. We did mention that he had a bit of a... Yeah, he's lost it at the cutting. So on Ooh. corner entry to the cutting, he's lost the rear end and just backed it into that fence there, which would have done enough damage in addition to the bit of damage he did in pit lane, remember, to maybe put him out of this race. And he's back in the lane now. And that's a shame for Kyle Stokes, who was running up there in about eighth place net at the moment with Henri Michaela still yet to come down and make a stop on lap 19. So an uber overcut coming in for Henri Michaela. So Stokes in on the lane. Now, look at the train forming behind Christian and Smart. You've got Bowden and Allen and Rosenblatt all there together. Andrew Dyson has dropped back considerably behind them and is with Daniel Hetterscheid in the 111 eSports car. But for the moment, here comes Kai Allen starting to look to the inside here of Rob Bowden. He's not close enough just yet, but time is on his side. Yeah, that's it. And another one that I wanted to sort of tie off the loose ends with was Kurt Stenberg. As we know, before the pit lane sequence started, he was racing Damian Johnston. And with six laps older tyres now, he's only about a second and a half clear of Johnston. So that strategy perhaps may not quite have worked out for Stenberg. Oh, huge wiggle from Bowden up the hill, out the mount, and now through towards the metal grate. And the next sections of track become so, so vital. Look at this. They're now going to start moving down the hill. Kyle Stokes officially out of the race, along with Yuan Ji Lin, who is out. Brenton O'Brien, Corey Preston, and Sergio Sete Camara also out of this race. Down the hill, they come along and look towards the next left and right out on circuit. And Rob Bowden, I think he's getting a little bit twitchy here. He knows that tanked SRT car wants to get through. Yeah, that's it. Really, really tight between those guys. He's going to have a run here down Conrad Strait. Staying in that draft, he's going to be almost on the limiter here as they approach 300 k's an hour. Underneath the Fuso sign, up towards the kink. Bowden goes to the inside. It's going to be too wide through the kink. Smart outside, but he... And that braking there just forced a bit of understeer from Bowden. And now it's going to get messy down the bottom, but they keep it straight. Awesome bit of driving. God, it's like watching a fish in the net at the moment, watching Rob Bowden race. That car is sideways at pretty much every single corner as they hit the brakes and go into the final left. Those rear tyres must not be liking Rob Bowden's driving style at this moment. And it is showing because Kai Allen now will start to look to the inside to try and get a move done at turn number one. And he's just not got the commitment to go through. And that is inexperience from Kai Allen because he compromised himself now all the way up the mountain. And Michael Rosenblatt has the best seat in the house. He'll think about having to go to the outside to get this one done. Or maybe he's got an angle to that inside line. Does he dare? No, he doesn't. He'll sit and wait in line. So he's got away with it as Kai Allen. But some great racing going on. Henri Michaela under pressure now as Corey Shepard wants a way through. Yeah, that's it. Corey Shepard, we mentioned early, showing quite a lot of pace at the early stages of the race. Uh, Henry Michael, I think, uh, hasn't actually pitted yet. So he's still going all flat out. He's on 19 lap old tyres now. I think, uh, yeah, still waiting, uh, waiting to see him reset through. So Corey Shepard may be frustrated behind a car that he really isn't racing at this point. Well, he's flashing his lights quite a bit then as he's trying to go through. He's saying, come on, let me go. I'm quicker than you. Let me have a chance to go through. But Michael has every right to hold on to that position. Remember, they are fighting for the place on track as they go through the chase and hit the person all behind. Looks like Dyson. we've had Andrew Dyson. Yeah, he's had a bit of a moment. Had a bit of a tricky race after his contact at the cutting earlier, and he's had a spin coming out of the uh, out of the dipper there. I've actually done that in real life. Unfortunately, um, I didn't hit the wall though. So real shame for uh, Andrew Dyson. He's just got on the throttle a little too early. Tried to cut a little too much out of the uh, out of the dipper there, and the things just rotated and spat him into the concrete wall. 
And that's so easy to do at that section. It's a very egregious downhill. The only corner in, in the world that I think gets anywhere near that dipper is the corkscrew at Laguna Seca in terms of going down a hill like that. So that was so very nearly trouble of the highest degree as they went on forward. But racing still continues. Side by side it was between Shepard and Michael up to turn two. But Michael has to depart from this at the moment. Now look at this though from Brady Myers. He's all of a sudden got a second in the bank because of James Scott struggling here on this lap, lap 21, side by side with Sam Sutton, who couldn't get it done. They're costing each other this race, unless they're banking on Brady not having fuel. Yeah, but the thing is, is Brady's got a lap newer tyres as well, and he's now got that gap that he can save the fuel if he needs to. I think um, James Scott, he's done really well under pressure for the last season or two, but I'm not sure. I think today he maybe just made a couple little mistakes. I think in pit lane, he's maybe taken a little bit too much fuel, and that's just frustrated him when you spend your whole race saving fuel to try and get the lead, and then a mistake in pit lane lands you in P2. That's got to be frustrating. Well, Burton, I put it to you right now. Would this be the perfect time to start burning that fuel and trying to put some lap times to get back within a one-second margin? Oh, absolutely. I think James Scott is probably driving as absolutely hard as he can at the moment. But the problem is, is he's got a lap older tyres than Brady Myers does. So mentally, that's just going to break you, knowing that you don't quite have the rubber underneath you that Brady does. You're losing time. And then you've got the pressure of Sam Sutton. Now, Sam is one of the hardest guys to stay in front of. He makes very little mistakes when he's chasing you. So that, that OPR Commodore is sitting very big, very big rather in the rear view mirror of James Scott at the moment. I think maybe he just needs to settle down, cool the tyres off and just go again. It's uh, as Henri Michael finally departs onto pit lane after what is 20 laps. Uh, he's gone on through 21 laps even going on. Watching Sam Sutton is like watching the Terminator at the moment. He does not make mistakes very often. And when he drives, he drives absolutely flawlessly out on track. So Michael in to make his stop. He'll get the fuel, he'll get the tyres, and he'll get himself going again. He'll fall behind Rob Bowden, Smart, Allen and Rosenblatt, as well as Dan Hetterscheid. Uh, out on circuit but this is going to be interesting to see where he comes out because there's Andrew Dyson still going about but he's got Mitch Bolton and Marty Hansen in a scrap and they may almost go too wide into turn one. Michael is going to come out right in the thick of this mind you and Dyson's going to get through on Michael but now they're going to be side by side surely Bolton and Michael. Yeah that's it the thing Bolton has to consider though is that He's been out on track since lap 13 where Michael has brand new tyres on. So there's nine laps difference between these two, but they're going to race nice and tight up to Griffin's Bend. And unfortunately, Michael is going to lose that position and now probably be tanked all the way over the top of the hill with a car in front that's got nine laps older tyres. Well, the issue would have been maybe cold tyres there, trying to get them up to temperature, find out where the braking point is, find out where the grip is. Takes a couple of corners to work it out before you get yourself going. Look at Damien Johnstone now all of a sudden for ninth place. Kurt Stenberg, who was the earliest pitcher of anybody in this race, is going to have to fuel save like a demon for almost two laps to get this one done, maybe even three or four, unless he's going to have to come in and pit again. Johnstone needs to get the move done quickly because there's Brian Borg just behind. Yeah, that's it. And I think just the sheer difference in tyres here is going to mean the difference. I think we said six laps difference between these two. So Damien Johnson should just be able to easily outbreak Stenberg as soon as he can get an overlap. But it's not going to happen this lap by into the chase. Stenberg still hitting his marks nicely. So um, he's going to have to chase him up mountain straight and have a crack again this lap. Johnstone can't afford to assimilate to the pace of Kurt Stenberg. If he does so, he's going to be in a whole world of hurt when Brian Borg breezes on by. So they've got themselves not long to go. Nine laps of racing remain here in this race. And second and third, it's on at the moment. Sutton and Scott at the moment, nose to tail through the cutting corner and not quite close enough just yet. But this mountain's so tough to make those moves. Myers with a two second margin here at the front of the field, but two seconds around this place goes in a heartbeat. Yeah, that's it. I have to really compliment Brady Myers. If he did in fact under fuel the car and is just managing the race with track position, awesome call. And he's driving so consistently at the moment. 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, 
the last three laps. Really, really smart drive. I think we've seen Brady Myers come a long, long way in this new car over the last season, and I'm really excited to see him getting a result here at Bathurst. Well, this is the best place to get a result, and we're seeing so many amazing drivers having a great run of things here today. Watch Corey Shepard, though. He's closed right back up here to Ryan O'Sullivan for sixth and seventh position on the road. Ryan O'Sullivan is net equal for his race so far. He started in sixth. He is in sixth at the moment, and he'll be hoping to stay in sixth position as he comes down the Conrod Strait once again. Corey Shepard... You know, he has lost three places so far in this race to Briggs, to Ross, and to O'Sullivan. But you cannot discount the fact that he has stayed competitive in this field. Yeah, that's it. He's definitely trying to move his way back forward. He was one of the later pitters, respectively. Go. But he's going to get a bit of a run on the corner exit there after a bit of a mistake from O'Sullivan. Shepard to the outside now as they head towards the last corner. But he's going to oh. tip the grass as Catches it nicely, though. Well caught. Oh, well, you can see the margins that drivers are pushing now. Corey Shepard, maybe that youthful and experienced starting to knock on here for car 20. Looking to try and get by car 15. Going up over the curb, heavy through turn one and up the mountain. Once again, O'Sullivan doing just enough to protect and to hold that position at this moment in time. Brian Borg sideways through turn number one there. Where was Scafey when you need him there? Catches the grass on entry and almost tags the back of Johnstone. Yeah, that's it. As we mentioned, uh, Sperry, with the rendition of this new car with iRacing's new tyre model, that really punishes you when you drop a wheel into the grass like that. And we saw Brian Borg Benny's as well wide. as Corey Shepard make that mistake. But yeah, Kurt Stenberg roll wide at Griffin's Bend. That's going to give the position up to Johnston. And now he's going to be under attack from Brian Borg as they head towards the cutting. Borg has a look. Hard spot to do it. Too wide as they head up towards the hill. Stenberg is going to keep the position. He is for the moment. And now all tap. Big tap there from Jack Winners, giving notice to Brian Borg. He's a little bit friendlier than other drivers is Jack Winners, so that'll be something just to keep in mind as I've just caught an eye on Henri Michaela having an issue out on track, and he's had his uh, big moment as he's actually had massive, massive contact with Mitch Bolton down at the Forest Elbow. Yeah, we're going to catch a replay of that one, Sperry. Obviously, uh, Michael is trying to get a lot of moves done. Uh, you know, he pitted so, so late. He's got such a big tyre advantage. I can't quite see what happened on my end, but it looks like he's tried to go for a move down into Forest Elbow. But uh, the car of, uh, I believe that's in front of him, Mitchell Bolton, has had a bit of a block and the two have just come together under brakes. Yeah, that was always going to be trouble here out on track. You can see that out of the race is one driver there, but the racing still continues. Marty Hansen has also run into troubles. He's down on the lane with damage, and that will hurt his progress in this race. The gap between your leaders is just getting whittled down at tenth by tenth at this moment with seven laps to go. The gap is 1.8 seconds between Scott and Myers. Remember, Scott does not have to fuel save as much as Myers, but it's the tyres which are the great equaliser at the moment. James Scott is not closing quick enough. He's got to make sure that he's putting pressure on Brady Myers here and to force him to use more fuel to cover the gap. Yeah, that's it. Brady Myers has been very consistent, but James Scott, since that mistake earlier that cost him so much time with Sam Sutton, has been ultra consistent the last three laps within two hundredths of a second i wouldn't mind actually getting an onboard lap with one of these two boys at one point the way these top three are driving at the moment is so cool on board with your race leader at the moment brady myers down the mountain at the moment you can see just how brilliantly he is driving he is taking every corner as close as he dares to the wall as he takes that nice narrow line through the forest elbow you can take two different styles going through there but he takes the one that runs him out wider and now down the conrod for the 25th time in his race he is having a stellar drive started position number one had to work hard for most of this race has a gap but just that at the moment, Burton, a gap. 
Yeah, that's it. Brady really knows his way around this place, as does, you know, James Scott and Sam Sutton as well. Jordan Ross has fallen back a little bit over the last few laps, and his pace relative to Adam Briggs hasn't actually been that good. Briggs is coming on quite strong in the latter part of this race with a 4-9 last lap to Jordan Ross's 5 well, that's going to be crucial. Look at the time, though. A 2.04.8 from Brady Myers. Effectively, a 2.04.9 against a 2.04.5, which should be a 2.04.6 from James Scott. So, three tenths of a second chopped off. The gap, all of a sudden, becomes a second and a half for Brady Myers. So, he's not out of the woods just yet. He's got a lot of work to do if he wants to get the result the way that he wants it at the moment. And we've got other battles out on track. You've got the forecast scrap between Widdus, Borg, Stenberg and Johnstone. Stenberg has not fallen away and you've still got Shepard and O'Sullivan close together on track but not in any position to have a change of position right now. Yeah, that's it. Corey's looking quite aggressive. Quite a lot of weaving going up uh, Mountain Straight that last lap by. These two trying to break each other's draft, trying to get in each other's head. I think uh, Corey probably has the pace to do this, but Ryan's uh, Ryan's mentally just so much more experienced and just making so many less mistakes around him. Well, look at how opening up the corners, Corey Shepard is trying to close down that gap. He's taking different lines now here up the mountain compared to Ryan O'Sullivan, who looked a little twitchy trying to put the power down. I wonder if the rears are starting to fade slightly for Ryan O'Sullivan as he heads through the left-hander at McPhillamy all the way down the hill then at Brock Skyline. The right, left, and now the right again. A big lockup as he goes on through, trying to keep the tyres pretty much as preserved as possible is now looking towards the forest elbow oh it's a huge slide going through from Corey Shepard and he closes it right up but has he compromised the run here to the fastest corner in Australian sim racing a little bit but not as much as my Ryan O'Sullivan did he was really power sliding that thing off forest elbow here and there's going to be an overlap but Shepard pulling out of the draft what I think way too early they're still going to be quite close here I'm wondering if maybe Corey Shepard needs to save a little bit of fuel because he's being very conservative with his breaking points behind Ryan O'Sullivan he certainly is and Myers has got the hurry up message he goes a tenth quicker to a 2043 either he's got the number that he wants from fuel saving or he's having to respond here to the driver behind to keep the margin at exactly what he wants battle down the mountain Kai Allen still can't find a way through on Christian Smart this is for 16th and 17th place on the road right now on the brakes they go into the chase and again the great equalizer being Rob Bowden yeah that's it he's driving quite well at the moment isn't Rob um, uh, Christian Smart a little bit of a mistake that time by Kai is fast but I think he's quite new to these uh, to these supercars here on iRacing I think uh, he does a bit of karting in real life so he's trying to see how these tires are falling away trying to attack Christian Smart but uh, yeah, in terms of our race for the lead at the moment, I think Brady Myers has done exactly what you said, Sperry. I think he's hit the number with a few 2046s and a 2048, and now he's gone, I'm safe to the end. Let's run a 2043 and seal the deal. That could be the key. Robin Kirk looking to come back at Jamie McKnight, and you could say, oh, captain, my captain. Kirk needs to find a way through. And at the moment, Jamie McKnight, ever the experience, just keeping him at bay. Doesn't need to do too much in this race. And he is the biggest gainer in this field, bar one. McKnight is up eight places. The biggest gainer overall, Kai Allen, 29th up to 17th. Yeah, that's it. And that's classic Jamie McKnight. You know, he doesn't always have the one lap pace because he doesn't have the time like some of these younger guys to just go and throw heaps of hours at hot lap pace. But he's always consistent come the race. So really stoked to see Jamie getting a good result, assuming he can keep it in front of Robin Kirk. Well, that's going to be key, keeping it in front. Watch the gap, though. Four laps to go here at Mount Panorama. 2044, James Scott. And there is Brady Myers, 2044 covers, one and a half seconds still. But it is Sam Sutton now falling away. He's 1.3 behind James Scott at the moment. And I think he'll have to resign himself to his fate the longer this race goes on for Sam Sutton. Third place, definitely no slouch from starting in third. But he's just not been able to hang on enough 
compared to Brady and James in front. And look here at Kurt Sternberg. Here comes Brian Borg. Oh, he looked for the pit lane line to try and get the move done. But Sternberg, uber aggressive on the defense. Yeah, that's it. Stenny knows that his time is running out. Uh, he wants a top 10 on his birthday. He turns 25 today, and he's going to be approaching 25 laps on these tyres come the end of the race. So um, he really, really has put himself in a tricky position in terms of tyre wear. I think he's quite lucky that he's actually got the draft from Damian Johnson, which is pulling him along and making him much less susceptible to moves from Brian Borg. But the more that he starts to defend, the more fuel he'll actually start using. So he's got to be careful about the way he goes out there and actually attacks the final few stages or defends the final few stages of this race. Shepard still close to Ryan O'Sullivan as they head up the mountain and look themselves through towards the likes of the metal great corner as they go through the left right now. Go careful as you get right up close to the wall and now through the big left, which leads up to Brook Skyline and again, Corey Shepard is just in a range, but that range is, I'm going to save a little bit and wait for one decisive move. Yeah, that's it. The one thing that's quite unique to this track, Sperry, is that the uh, the long Conrod straight and two of our biggest passing opportunities at the chase and at Murray's corner are right at the end of the lap. So Corey's got time here. He can wait. He doesn't have to do anything until the last lap. And of course, there is a chance of a defense from Ryan Shepard and uh, sorry from uh, from Ryan O'Sullivan. But if he uh, if he waits till the last lap, really gets a nice run and gets it done, he can make sure that he gets the move done and gets to the line in front. 1.1 at the front of the field. Brady Myers has not had a good lap. That's a 2.049 going over there. And now all of a sudden, how much of a psychological advantage would it be for James Scott in the final three laps to get within the one second window? Yeah, that's it. The thing is for Brady Myers is uh, this is a, a track that mistakes really punish you. And seeing that relative screen and seeing that margin fall below one second, thinking in your head, he's getting closer, he's pulling me in, he's in draft range. That's like the literal form of having the walls close in on you. I think Brady Myers uh, will have the, uh, the strength to pull through this. You know, it's really half a second a lap that he needs to, to lose at most um, to, to sort of keep this win. But uh, it will be in the back of his head. And a mistake is really possible around a track like this. Absolutely. And remember, we still don't know what his numbers are on the fuel in the Altus Esports vehicle, his teammate behind, who has got two championships to his name in this series. He knows that he has to hand over that crown to Madison Dow here at Mount Panorama, despite the fact that he's not racing today. So, James Scott, can he go out with a bang and get himself a race victory? Brady Myers has to be cautious, has to be careful. Huge lockup from James Scott at the Forest Elbow, though. That would not have helped things at all very much. So, there'll be two laps to go when they cross the line. Myers has kept that gap pretty stationary over this lap, but no guarantees that vehicle could conk out of fuel at any moment. Yeah, that's it. I think... Brady's switched on enough to not have gone as hard early in the race. He, he's the kind of driver who I think would have sorted the problem early if he really did have a fuel problem. So I don't really think that's going to be an issue. Um, but you never know. It's really closing up. This lap, James Scott has pulled in a heap. It's going to be a 2.045 from Brady Myers to a 4 from James Scott. And he's just got that draft range now. He's at one second. He's at one second, and now Brady Myers will start looking behind. We'll see that James Scott will close a tenth down on the straights. Remember, two seconds difference on the fuel. James Scott can now go out there and attack. Adam Briggs as well. Get this for fourth and fifth. He's caught the back of Jordan Ross. Yeah, that's what I said earlier, Sperry. I, I really think Jordan Ross seems to have struggled in this second phase of the race. Adam Briggs is absolutely eating him up. And it looks like he's going to almost have it done here. A bit of a oh. big block from Ross there. He's going to have to go the long way, which you can't really do at Griffin's Bend. It's extremely cambered, a one-line corner. So he just tucks in and lives to fight another day. Well, Adam Briggs looking really, really aggressive now. Once that fourth place finish and has worked incredibly hard over the stint to close down three seconds in the final seven laps of this event. He closed down seven tenths of a second on that last time through the track. And you can see he's clearly he's visibly quicker as he goes on through, as well as you got the battle for the race lead slash podium. Brady Myers just doing enough at the moment. 
keeping behind James Scott. Yeah, that's it. I think this will be an extremely good drive from Brady Myers if he can pull it off. You Ooh. know, really was at a fuel disadvantage for the whole first half of the race. Managed to sort of somehow end up in the lead, whether that be under-fueled the car and then managed it later. Either way, really, really switched on. Mistake-free drive from, uh, from Myers if he can finish this lap in the lead. Corey Shepard's tagged the wall and keeps himself in a range to Ryan O'Sullivan. So Corey Shepard now started to use all of the road and a little bit more. The one lap to go signal. The white flag here will come along for Brady Myers as he leads this event by not very much over his teammate. There might be a bit of solace in front. That's Brenton O'Brien who is running to try and get any sort of I rating or safety rating. And remember, he's 18 laps down at the moment in this race. Myers, 2046. Scott, 2045. The gap is eight tenths as they start the final lap here. The final lap of the season here for the iRacing Esports Network before week 13 comes into view. You've got Jordan Ross right now. So much defending needs to be done here with Adam Briggs, who is tucked up on the gearbox and needs to get through, needs to find a way through. Ross is going to go defensive immediately as they come up the hill. No chance of a move yet for James Scott, and he gets very close to the wall on the outside. Here comes Briggsy, having to go the long way around again here at this Griffin's Bend to try and get it done. Overlap as they enter, trying to go up and under potentially to get it done. It's not the style of corner, not the profile of corner where that is available. And now it may just have to be the chase for Adam Briggs unless he finds something unique like at the cutting, which he can't quite do at the moment. Shepard still behind here, the likes of Ryan O'Sullivan. And we've got some side by side up the hill between Jack Wittes and Brian Borg as they go on through. Borgie on the outside. Wittes has got it to the inside. And Jack Wittes has picked up one more place. Down the mountain comes along Brady Myers. He's got enough of a gap. But is the fuel okay? That's the question to be asked at this point in time. And it looks like it is at the moment. But we're into the final stages where the fuel now is used to its very, very limit. And you can see Myers just pulling away. Getting the gap. That is exactly what's needed. Briggs has made a mistake. And that will be fourth place gone with one... Jordan Ross there just holding the gap. Myers looks okay for the moment. 288 on the kilometers per hour. On the brakes into the chase. Unfazed, unchallenged. One final run to go. Do not count your chickens just yet. He's still got this one to go. And he's just about going through the gears. Fine enough. So Brady Myers, big lift as he hits the final corner. Goes through the final turn. And has masterminded a brilliant race win here at Mount Panorama Bathurst. James Scott and Sam Sutton second and third. The podium split by two seconds as they come to the line. Jordan Ross will hold off that fourth place finish. And in terms of other battles out on track, uh, it seems like Brian Borg has got exactly what he wants out of it. Has something happened to Jack Widdis on the final stages of the lap? Absolutely, you bet he has. It was a turnaround at the cutting going through with contact between both himself and Brian Borg. Yeah, that's it. We're going to catch a replay of that one, Sperry. It looks like... It, uh, it happened earlier in the lap, quite a bit earlier cutting. in the lap, actually, down at the cut. It happened at the cutting. We'll get it in a moment for you because Jack Winners is going to come over the line soon. James McKnight and Robin Kirk in full pursuit at this moment. So they're doing well. want to give a huge shout out, actually, to Kurt Stenberg on his birthday. He gets ninth place here, Burton, but did so by pitting on lap seven and fuel saving crazily. Yeah, that's it. Take a look at the field spread as well, Sperry. We will take note of the uh, of the full race results when the race comes to an end. But Kurt Stenberg in P9, 42 seconds off the race lead. That shows, obviously, with a longer race, but also a seriously competitive front few guys, how big a gap you can build over a race like this. Exactly, and we'll get a little look at what happened then on the final lap to Jack Widdis with his incident with Brian Borg if we can try and get that up on screen for you so uh, this is just a little bit after we can see moving on a little bit too far forward at this point in time but we'll try our best to get it in the meanwhile though uh, you can see this is about a lap ahead of exactly what happened so some great racing action has happened over the course of racing here today but let's get classified results up on your screen for you at the moment because 
Brady Myers has picked up the win. He took an hour and four minutes and 59 seconds. Let's just call it an hour five to win by one second over James Scott with Sam Sutton, a very respectable third place just behind keeping both Altus drivers honest. Jordan Ross had to fight hard in the final stages. He gets fourth place ahead of DPR's Adam Briggs in fifth with Ryan O'Sullivan in sixth ahead of Corey Shepard who dropped three places today but no slouch was his drive to seventh place. Damian Johnstone gets eighth with Kurt Stenberg on the amazing undercut to ninth overall with Brian Borg picking up the top 10 in slightly acrimonious circumstance. Yeah, that's it. And over the page we go, Steve Janssen up a few spots to 11th. Jack Wittes in 12th. One of the drives of the night, I think, Jamie McKnight. Smooth and calculated, mistake-free, up from 21st to 13th. One of our biggest gainers of the race. Robin Kirk had a rough night in the office after a bit of damage sustained early at the cutting in 14th. Rob Bowden in a few race-long battles as well in 15th. Our biggest mover of the night was Kai Allen, who had a no result in qualifying and drove that car from 29th to 16th with Christian Smart, Michael Rosenblatt, Andrew Dyson, and David Hedershield in your 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th positions. Greg Sharp was the last finisher on the leading lap with Marty Hansen two laps down in 22nd. Mitch Bolton and Henri Michael came into blows and they both finished four laps down. Kyle Stokes failing to get it over the line with Brenton O'Brien finishing 19 laps off the race lead come the end. He did finish, though. That's the key. Three more drivers didn't finish. Yuan Ji Lin, Corey Preston and Sergio Sete Camara not finding the end of the race here today. But... Crucially, that puts an end to the season in terms of what has happened. But we do have, I do believe, the replay of exactly what happened in the final stages uh, of that race between Brian Borg and Jack Widdis. So you can see it on your screen right now as they head up the hill into turn two. It's Borg on the outside. Widdis on the inside gets the position and gets it late. But Brian Borg's going to come back here at turn number three and four, up the cutting. He's going to see a gap open here from Jack Willis, who takes the wide line, and that is brave down the inside from Borg, who holds that inside line, but Willis can't cover the gap enough, and ultimately, contact for Willis costs him a couple of places late on in the race, and he won't be too happy about the way he has lost that one moving forward. But Burton, that was a fantastic season of sim racing, and you can't argue it. Yeah, it certainly was. It was good to see some big names make a return to the Monday night broadcast, in, including our series champion, Madison Down, who really, to be honest, used consistency up until the last couple of rounds to get that win. He really took a long time to get that breakthrough victory, but good to see the man who was known for winning official Monday night series come back and win his 10th, um, as well as the usual regulars of the likes of Richard Hampstead, James Scott, etc., etc., having a really, really good run this season. And then Brady Myers and James Scott finishing off well with an Altus 1-2 here at the mountain. But we're really looking forward to next season to see hopefully as many of these guys and more come back to race in the uh, in the iRacing Monday Night Official Series. Of course, anyone can race in this championship, Sperry. So uh, feel free to come along and have a race. Exactly, and that's the key. There's many splits of racing when it comes to the Monday night V8s. There's four or five splits at a time, which produce some brilliant racing up and down the order. But officially, it is going to be Madison Downs Championship. There was no way for James Scott to claw back the points that he very so much needed. But ultimately, some great racing up and down the order. A massive thanks to Motum Simulations who have been on the replays from Scott Fountain on the cameras and Jake Burton alongside me. This has been a Sim Speed presentation on the iRacing Esports Network and I have been Jake Sperry. But it's Brady Myers who has the sweetest smile here at Mount Panorama Bathurst. He wins at the most fabled track in Australian sim racing and wins by only a second. It doesn't matter if it's an inch. It doesn't matter if it's a mile. A win Win is a win is a win, and he will now put himself up as one of the markers to beat when it comes to next season. And we'll hope to see you in two weeks' time for that. But check out all the great stuff. Like, share, subscribe. The iRacing Esports Network, the road to 50k subs continues, and we hope to see you very soon. Sis to the front bumper, and he hits him again now. Ray Alfala into the outside wall. He's going to pass nearly three cars down that front straightaway, and he's going to get him.
Paul Goodwin, what a meet. Lee to the inside, goes Logan Cloudman is going to touch in. Pit Brass saves it. What a save. Looks to the outside, and Gronke goes off. De Jong into second place. I'm going for the switchback. Oh, ho, ho. pinpoint driving. It's howling oh. down to the inside. Oh. I tried this contact, though. And wide left for the race track. Chris Leonard drives it back down underneath, and he takes that second spot right back. Joker goes to Garrett Lowe. Garrett Lowe should take victory with all that contact. He's going to try and make the move around the upset the Parabolka. That's not going to work, but he's going to try and get the cut back here. Get the run out the Parabolka. That's beautifully done there. Michael Schumann, the 